This is Up Close. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. As we reach new stages in life, embracing who we are and who we'll become can help us achieve a greater measure of happiness. On this week's episode, we'll speak to two people embracing new ways of thinking about their respective stages in life. For Melanie Notkin, reaching her early 40s without the husband and children she long planned to have offered an opportunity to look at her life in a different way. Speaking for millions of women in this situation, she's defined a group called The Otherhood, and we'll discuss her book of that name. But sometimes, the most we can hope for with our old dreams is to get close to what we'd imagined and acknowledge that achieving something, even in a less than perfect manner, is still worthwhile. Journalism professor Ari Goldman picked up the cello on the eve of his 60th birthday, deciding to simply do the best that he could. He chronicles that experience in The Late Starters Orchestra. But first, here's my interview with the founder of The Otherhood, Melanie Notkin. So, Otherhood, define it for me. Well, Otherhood is that cohort of women, mostly Gen X, women who grew up expecting to have the social, economic, and political equality that our mothers weren't born with, but eventually we'd grow up and get married and have the kids that they did have. Only so many of us, among the most well-educated, um, among the most financially independent, um, among, frankly, among the most fabulous, remain single and childless. You know, if you may the, say so yourself. Well, I don't know about me, but, but certainly it's those women where you say, I can't believe she's still single. She's got everything going for her. And it's this cohort of modern women who are struggling with the fact that that their fertility is ending or has ended and yet their their desire for family um, is is still very much there what is the size of the otherhood you you do have some numbers here about how many women are like this and and drilling down to precisely what group we're talking about 19 million women between the ages of 20 and 44 although of course there are women who are 45 plus like myself I'm 45 um, who remain single and childless and by the way some some are married um, and uh, and that is really based on partly on the, the U.S. Census data, where we know now that 47 percent of American women through the age of, of 44 um, in America are childless. Um, we know that that number has been growing. In 1976, it was just 35 percent. Um, we know that about 20 percent of women 40 to 44 uh, don't have children, about half of them by choice, and I honor and champion that choice, and about half of them um, by circumstance or uh, biology. Overall, though, there's a sense that this, this is clearly something that's changed, right? That this is something that 20 years ago was not the same as it is today, and 30 years. What's generated that change? Hmm. Frankly, I, I think that it's um, one of the um, changes that came about as the, the for the daughters and sons of, of feminism in that we and I am a feminist and I am there's no question I'm a feminist and I am so grateful for feminism but what happened was in the 70s is that there was this this idea of the male chauvinist pig the the, the guy who would um, and some of them still exist but the guy who would um, eschew women as, as being weaker etc and um, it became almost a um, something that little girls my age would hear as any boy who tried to think that he was better than a girl he's a male chauvinist pig and we would say anything boys can do girls can do better and there was this um, there was this uh, tension, I think, that was built where girls had to um, become like boys, and, and even today um, that still happens, where um, femininity seems to be the only thing that feminism is doesn't necessarily approve of, um, that it, seem, it seemed as potentially weak, and yet I believe wholly that there is power in our femininity and that it's okay to lean back and not necessarily have to lean forward and lean in every moment of the day in your professional and in your personal life. And now, Ari Goldman talks cello and the Late Starters Orchestra. A lot of people explore new things as the kids grow older, as they move on into the next stage of life. Some people get fancy cars, some people get a boat. Uh, you got a boat of an instrument, <laughs> right? You, you bought a cello. I figured I had been flirting with the cello my whole life. Um, it's something that I want to do and then I pick up and I put down and I pick up and I put down and finally I said, I'm approaching 60 
It seems like a big, scary number, and I'm going to give it one more shot in my life. And um, my goal was to play in public. I had played rather poorly, sometimes with, um, with amateur orchestras and sometimes with my teacher or with my son, but I wanted to play to a solo thing for my 60th birthday. Music was part of your family legacy and a large part of how you fit into your family. And it's a really mm -hmm. touching story of how for you in, in terms of your religion, in terms of your family, in terms of your day-to-day -day life, music was a way in and you needed to find a way back in. I felt um, the cello spoke to me. It was the music of my soul. It related to me in a way that no other instrument did. And it reminded me of the chazan in shul. And um, I tell the story in the book about um, at my bar mitzvah, I had a great range. I could sing, and I sang uh, a kalbach mimkomcha, and this great tune that's, um, that goes three octaves, and I could sing it. I could go from bottom to top, hit every note, and then as I grew older, I, my voice changed after, after my bar mitzvah, and I couldn't sing anymore, but I always wanted to make that sound, and the cello makes that sound. The cello um, is the instrument that most approximates the human voice, and it, the only way for me to sing now is through my cello. It becomes this activity for you that is about trying to be good <coughs> at making music, but it's also about not trying to be good. What, 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 what's going <laughs> well, on? Well, it, it's, it's about like accepting your, it's a horrible word, but it's accepting mediocrity. I know I'm never going to be a really good cellist, but being a mediocre cellist has its pleasures. And my book is about playing the cello, but really at this stage in life, people have more time. Uh, they're a little more secure in their careers. Maybe their children are out of the house. They they can fulfill ambitions that we couldn't fulfill when we were young. That's all for this week's abbreviated web episode of Up Close. A reminder, you can see the full episode of Up Close on the Jewish channel on cable or listen to the full audio of the show as a podcast available on iTunes and your favorite podcast player. The Jewish channel is available on cable. Time Warner Cable Channel 1640, Iowa Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Cox Cable Channel 1, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and on Comcast on the on-demand menu on Cable. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.